Hey, there you are. My name is Ray, I'm with Team Steam. And today here I'm outside of Flash Industrial Painting. I've got my, my tire mounting set up. You can see it's just on a pallet. And I've tipped it off of this uh, wheelbarrow. That's how I hauled it over here. And uh, I'm getting ready to put it flat on the ground and I'm getting ready to mount um, four wheels on four tires so I can put them on my, my newly uh, uh, anointed water truck. The truck is this 04 uh, F350. As you can see, it's got a pretty beat up box on it. It's an oil field truck out of uh, North Dakota, but the tires that are on it, especially on the back, have cracks all the way around the uh, the tire on the inside, and they're you know they're old enough that they just need to be replaced. Now I've got my outdoor shop space set up here, and I'm finally ready to start uh, mounting tires on wheels. Um, the reason that I've got it outdoors is because. Of this giant oil field truck that's taking up the whole entire shop um they'll be here to get it tomorrow and today is a gorgeous day so i'd rather be working outside anyway that's why we're out front okay i got rid of that sweatshirt and now we'll get down to some basics when you go to mount your wheel and tire together remember if you're running all new stuff all tires come with this yellow dot you line this yellow dot up with the valve stem and it is automatically balanced as long as the tire's new and the wheel's new, it's automatically balanced. Heck, even if the wheel's used, you just make sure that if the wheel's used, you take off any prior weights that somebody else might have placed there, and you can start from scratch with a new tire, and you line that yellow mark up with that, and it doesn't even have to be on the same side. The yellow mark could be on the inside of the vehicle, so it's not outside looking like it, like it does. Just as long as it's in the same location as the valve stem, it'll be balanced from, the, from day one. There you go. All right, we'll give this a try. Got it. Now it'll start popping. Just like that. Then you want to have your valve stem ready this guy here's my valve stem puller the reason I let that go a few seconds was because it sounded like it had a, quite a bit of pressure these are probably around a 50 pound tire and it sounded like it was coming out of there a little more than 50 pounds yeah 50 pounds that's just perfect All right, now we'll go ahead and clean this mess up and uh, pull the pickup closer so we can go ahead and put the wheels on. Now we got all that done, uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to straighten out the box. And I'll show you what I mean by that. See, when you look down this pickup, look how badly bent that box is. I mean, that thing is C-shaped. And even though it's just going to be a water truck, that's a huge turnoff for me. So I'm going to uh, do whatever i got to do to straighten that out as much as I can. I'm going to bend these up. You can see on both sides, they're, they're way down and uh, just get it in some semblance of uh, factory shape. All right, so what I've done is I've got my Porta Power kit out. I've got it stretched out across there. Here's the pump. And I've got that strap holding it tied to the fifth wheel uh, stabilizer. And I've got it 
the reason I've got this board here is just to hold it up above everything so this board here doesn't feel compelled to squash down onto the rest of this. I need this board to stay up on this ridge. And not because I'm trying to pull that in, but because I'm trying to hold it in. I, it's fairly straight from that strap forward is fairly straight. You can see the alignment. It's pretty straight on the truck. But if I just go ahead and push this out, it's going to push this whole C-shape out. And that spot where the strap is, is going to be inches further out that way. And we will have gained nothing. Well, in fact, it'll be worse. We will have really put a lot of strain on that corner and on other parts of the box. So I'm trying to hold that still without kinking it. That's why I have the board. So it doesn't kink it in one spot. And I'm going to push out on it here to try and straighten all that out. So now when we look down the curvature of the top of this bed, we see the slight C shape, which is the way it's supposed to look. This side, which has been undisturbed in such a manner, it's been disturbed in other manners, but does have a straight stock side. You can see it's a slight C shape. That's the way these Fords are. And that's the way this one now is. Instead of a heavy C shape, we have a slight C shape. And the side really isn't any worse for wear. It was already beat up. We didn't beat it up any more than it already was. I just didn't want it shaped quite so badly. Now I'm going to take this lip and knock it up, up front too, and the few spots it needs it here. And then it'll be mostly straightened out. I'll pull this bolt out so I can get this mess straightened up. And then it'll be mostly straightened out and ready to go. Well, now we're going to undergo the next phase of old junker truck restoration, paint free restoration 101. I've got the uh, seat covers for the front. And then up here, I'm going to go ahead and just replace the grill. I have this grill for a truck I was going to sell, and that plan got kind of changed. So I'm going to put this grill in this truck, and then I've got a chrome bumper that I bought from one of my customers that I'm going to go pick up. There was one right here in town. And I'm going to go pick it up here this afternoon, and I'm going to install the both of them. So I went to clear the check engine light, and it wouldn't actually link to the truck. I've never had that happen before. And I looked under the hood, and this was an oil field truck, so it had, I don't know how many purposes in its lifetime, but it had these wires off of the hot terminal, those two additional wires, which I'm gonna track down and get rid of off the hot terminal. And then the more I start tracking them, the more I realize that there's wires that went down to here that had no end on them. And there was three or four wires, big wires that went down through there. Here's the ones that I dug out of just this door seal and here we're getting more components out all kinds of little components and here as you can see the plot has thickened all of those wires all of that stuff that came down out of there almost none of it is stock i need to separate out what is and what isn't and get rid of everything that isn't which is the vast majority of that okay so this is what i ended up coming up with that's one, two, three, four, five good sized components, two smaller ones, an antenna, and I don't know, 600 feet of cable. <laughs> I don't know how much is there, but that's how much I pulled out of this truck. And as you can see, it is a lot cleaner up in the fuse box area. There's no wiring hanging down. I can finally hook up to that port. That's my uh, ODB port, so I can actually try and diagnose this vehicle now. And as you can see, that component and all that stuff has gone out of there, so now we're ready to be back in business. So I got my 2001 in here, and it's going to be retired. It's got all the gear on the front to be a snowplow truck, and it comes with a really good snowplow, so it'll just be my backup snowplow truck. But um, I'm going to change out the uh, bumper. I'm going to take this nice chrome bumper. I don't think it's the original. But I do think it's the original. You know, it's made for this truck, but I don't think it was, it came on this truck. I think they replaced it before they before they got rid of the truck. So it's in really good shape. I'm gonna take this one off, put it on here. I've already taken this one off. It's right there. I'm gonna take that one, put it back on there, just so this has some sort of bumper. I'm going to take these, or at least one, and put it on there, and take these two new ones and put them on here.
All right, so now I'm gonna put some uh, seat covers on it because this has got, you know, just nasty seats in it. The back seat cover that I ordered, turns out it came for a seat with headrests, which this doesn't have, so I won't be putting it on at the moment. And the uh, front ones I've already got, I've already got the backs on them and they turned out all right. They, they weren't for this specific model because I didn't get these covers, which is fine. This is just a water truck, just totally a work truck. But as you can see, these seats are nasty. So I've got this seat all loose. I'm getting ready to pull it out of here and uh, try and replace this uh, bottom cover on both of them. All right, now I've got the seat covered. Got it all put back together. Um, I had to take the entire thing apart. I mean, clear down to nothing and then cut the other cover completely off. It was really fastened to it. So um, now it's all ready to go. Got to go back in the truck with it and then do the other one. All right, now we got the seats all done. They're all in. Now that's done, ready to go. Next, I'll be doing the bumper and the grill. And here's the front bumper. And it's gonna replace that one. That'll be the next thing I do. All right, I got the uh, old bumper off. Okay, and here it is all done. Zero paint work, a little bit of uh, metal straightening and some uh, new parts and then some used parts that just look new. Now it's in a lot better shape. Lost 50 pounds in wiring. Got some pretty decent upgrades. And now it's gonna spin its life hauling water.